Science is a huge part of the pharmaceutical industry, lots of chemistry, biology, and math. One area that's seeing pretty consistent and steady growth is the generic drug market with estimates of 5 to 8% yearly growth across the globe. Have you ever had a doctor recommend the generic brand for one type of medication but then tell you to stick with the brand name for another? Both are viable options, so let's get into how generic and brand name medications are similar and different. Here we go. You're watching iHeart STEM. Today we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. Brand name drugs are drugs that are launched with a specific protected name that have undergone several steps to become available to us. Some of the key steps in the US include scientists discovering that a specific drug may help a disease or ailment, they are testing to gather information on the effects, toxicity, safety, and effectiveness across the population, and applying to market the drug with the FDA, who then vets all aspects how the drug tests were done, brand label effectiveness, and even the manufacturing itself. A brand name drug is typically protected via patents and or regulatory exclusivity, which allows it to be the only option on the market for a certain amount of time. Generic drugs are drugs that leverage an existing FDA approved reference listed drug with the same amount of active ingredients, AKA the brand name drug, in addition to several other characteristics that you see on your screen. Because of the patent on the brand name drug, they have to wait until it expires or get court approval to enter the market earlier. Once they have that approval, they just have to do testing that shows this drug does have the same therapeutic effect as the brand name drug. The key thing to take away is that generic only has to have the same active ingredients. Inactive ingredients do not have to be the same, which is what makes the medication different in addition to the physical appearance. Inactive ingredients, also called excipients, help with the absorption, taste, or other aspects of the drug. The amount of excipients in brand name drugs are often not shared publicly, so generic medications use different excipients or potentially different amounts of the same ingredients. One way to think about excipients is how you substitute an ingredient in cooking and baking. Maybe you run out of apple cider vinegar and don't have time to go to the store. If you just need something acidic, you could use white wine vinegar as a substitute, or if something fruity and acidic, use lemon juice. As long as this isn't the focal ingredient, this won't change the core taste of the recipe. Excipients work the same way. They're not the main ingredient, so generic drug companies can figure out options to still keep the active ingredients effective with different inactive materials. There are a few types of inactive substances that may be included. To help a drug dissolve or permeate, companies may add ingredients that are considered solubilizers, surfactants, or permeation enhancers. Because drugs are not just what you get, but how long it helps, sustained release polymers, binders, or disintegrants are used to slow absorption or break up the drug into smaller pieces. Other drugs can assist with ensuring the drug is absorbed in a specific part of the body or ensure its stability. The selection of which excipients to use is dependent on which excipients still allow the reference listed drugs, aka the active drugs, to produce the same therapeutic effect and therefore are considered similar drugs. This is called bioequivalence. Getting more technical, this means there cannot be a statistically significant difference in how quickly the active ingredient is absorbed, how much of it is absorbed, or what it does to the body. Bioavailability is the term for the measurement of the rate and the amount of drug absorption. The FDA considers drugs to be similar if scientists are able to say that they are 90% confident that on average, the generic drug's absorption into the body will fall somewhere between 80% and 125% of the brand name drug's absorption. Tongue twister. What this really means is on average, there is less than a 5% difference between generic and brand name. This is measured through studies that look at the drug effects on biological fluids like blood or plasma. There are some cases where doing the PK study won't work, so the FDA allows other confident studies to ensure the drug is doing what it's supposed to. There are also other guidelines that governing bodies employ to ensure the science of the drug is like for like, such as recommending certain types of studies and requiring the highest dosage of the drug be tested. The human body is complicated and the state in which you take medication as well as your health can lead to differences in how your body reacts, which is why the science of medications is so difficult. Even if a drug has bioequivalence, there are still a few situations where additional scientific consideration is given to brand name versus generic. With NTI drugs, there's a fine line between what we can take and what will poison our body. Because there's some variability between brand name and generic, even a small change in the drug could cause some people's bodies to absorb the drug differently on the end that is not good. Because broad testing won't say how an individual will be impacted, monitoring often has to be done at a patient level. Examples of these types of drugs include those for your thyroid seizures or organ rejection prevention. A little more obvious, but drugs that are in the form of a cream are put on our body, of which all of us can have different sensitivities. How a drug will interact with an individual's skin is different from bioequivalence, which is hard for scientists to predict beyond knowing it's okay to use on the skin. While testing will eliminate statistically significant variation, subtle differences in release timing could actually lead to a big dump of a dose or an unplanned interaction. Examples of these drugs would be pain relievers and diabetes medications. 
Personally, I feel like brand name versus generic drug seems like trying to recreate an amazing meal you had at a restaurant where they list all the ingredients, but not the amounts. And if you add too much of one thing or try to add an extra ingredient, it can completely change the whole recipe. Maybe? Check out the episode description to learn more and have a fabulous weekend.